So uh, let us uh, continue where we left off yesterday. We were discussing the n path principle. And uh, we saw one practical case uh, uh, system which uses this uh, n path principle which is the area of time interleaved analog to digital converters. And alternative uh, another area which is uh, which also uses this is uh, multiphase. DC DC conversion and the basic principle behind that is what I am going to explain today. Uh, so, as we were discussing a DC DC converter uh, as shown in this example is, is a way this is let us assume that this is the battery voltage. Uh, And this is of course a very simplified picture of the whole thing and the DC DC converter is supplying some load current say I sub L. This is an inductor and this is a capacitor. The principle with which this works is the following phi 1 and phi 2 are non overlapping clocks. So, this is phi 1, this is phi 2 and uh, And, at a, and therefore, at any one time only one of these switches is open uh, and the other one is closed. So, V x there therefore, uh, is a waveform which basically takes on the value of V bat for a fraction of the period of the clock namely this is this is T s and the duty cycle with which phi 1 is high is D then the width of this is d times T s. So, this is the V x waveform as a function of time and the peak value there is V bat uh, and when of course, when phi 2 is high uh, the value is 0. Now, the role of the low pass filter uh, is to uh, just select the DC value of this waveform and therefore, the idea is that if L and C uh, have a sufficiently large time constant then the average voltage the voltage waveform V out for all practical purposes should be D times V bat right. Ideally if L and C are infinite then it should be exactly D times V bat, but uh, uh, in practice of course, you cannot make them very big uh, or uh, inordinately big because they will that means uh, it is more expensive and it occupies a lot of space. So, uh, uh, this is what is called a buck converter for those of you who have not seen this before and uh, uh, you know as uh, as I was explaining yesterday this is a way of getting a voltage d times v bat which is smaller evidently than v bat uh, without uh, at least ideally with 100 percent efficiency because none of these elements here right the the two switches uh, the inductor or the capacitor ideally are all lossless elements and therefore uh, if we are able to step down the voltage without um, any loss now uh, where does this fit in well this is a network as far as we are concerned this is a network that uh, has uh, periodically operated switches so as we, as far as we are concerned this is an lptv network right. Uh, the input is uh, uh, DC where in other words it is V bat times e to the j 2 pi f t where f is f is 0 right. And uh, the output voltage uh, is uh, the DC component of the output voltage is d times v bat which implies 
that uh, the h sub 0 of 0 is d right. But unfortunately, because L and C are finite, it is not only d c that is present at uh, the output, we should also expect to see of t yeah. So, it simply must be sum over k of uh, h sub k of 0 e to the j 2 pi f is 0. So, it must be k f s times t right. And to get an idea of what the waveforms look like, uh, you know let us assume that uh, L times c the uh, the square root of L by L times c which is the time constant corresponding to the LC network is much much larger than the switching period T s right. Under those circumstances if we draw these waveforms let me kind of make things more convenient for you to see. Uh, if we draw the waveforms and let us say choose a particular value of d I mean this we can be doing this for any duty cycle, but I am just going to choose an example a duty cycle a d equal to half that basically means that v out uh, the average value of v out is going to be v bat by 2. So, v a if you look at v x, v x is, is doing this. So, this is v x and v x of t and the output voltage is going to be approximately the d c value of the output voltage is going to be v bat by 2 All right. So, uh, if you uh, look at the inductor, the voltage during this phase, right? So, during this period, uh, Vx equals V bat, and therefore, the voltage across the inductor V sub L is nothing but plus V bat by correct. So, if the voltage across the inductor is plus V bat by 2, what comment can we make about uh, the current through the inductor? The voltage across a constant voltage is applied across an inductor and therefore, what will happen to the current through the inductor? It will it will ramp up. So, the, 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 uh, the current through the inductor will basically do this in that phase all right and uh, what will uh, so and what will it do during the uh, during this phase what happens to the voltage across the inductor well vl one end of uh, the inductor that's vx equals 0 and therefore vl is minus v bat by 2 and this is only an approximation right because we are neglecting the small ripple across the So, this is what the inductor current will look like okay. and so this is I L uh, and what must be the average value of I L? No, if there is no average current flowing through the inductor then uh, who is supplying the load? Exactly right. So, uh, the average current passing through the capacitor must be 0 in steady state and therefore, the average current uh, through the inductor must be uh, oh I am sorry I chose uh, the same L for uh, the load uh, so I will call this load I load. So, I the average current through the inductor must be the same as the load current all right and uh, what comment can you make? about the ripple across the 
across the inductor? Well, the voltage across the inductor during any one phase is V bat. So, V bat by L is the rate at which the inductor ramps up, ramps up and uh, the time you have for ramping up is T s over 2 and uh, therefore, the peak to peak, this is the peak to peak ripple. Intuitively, these things make sense because uh, you know if uh, the inductor is very large, there is a lot of inertia, it takes a long time to ramp up. If the voltage is very large for a given inductor, you will it will ramp up quicker and the ripple will be higher if you wait for a longer time because the ramp will be there for a longer period. Hmm? Now, the uh, so the current to the inductor can be thought of as a DC value of, uh, of uh, I load plus some ripple riding over it and uh, therefore, the voltage and this current the inductor current flows through the capacitor correct and uh, uh, the ripple voltage across the capacitor right will cause I mean the ripple current of the inductor will go through the capacitor and cause uh, a voltage ripple right. So, this waveform so the uh, if you look at the, uh, the ripple waveform the current through the inductor this is the ripple current and that is V bat by L times T s by 2 and uh, and uh, so, this is the current which flows through the is the AC current flowing through the uh, through the capacitor and which is the total current flowing through the the ripple current going flowing through L is the actual uh, current flowing through the capacitor because the capacitor cannot have any average DC current flowing through right is the same as uh, the current through the capacitor. So, if a current like this flows through a capacitor, what comment can we make about uh, the, uh, uh, the voltage across the capacitor? Well, it will do something like it will do something like this. Right. So, so, this is the ripple voltage. So, the capacitor voltage will have a constant value. The average value of the capacitor voltage is nothing but V bat by 2, right. On top of it, there will be a ripple, right, and uh, the, uh, the amplitude of the ripple will be inversely proportional to output ripple voltage uh, is, is obviously proportional to the amplitude of the triangular current through the capacitor. So, uh, is uh, V bat by L times T s by 2, right and it is also proportional to inversely proportional to the capacitor. If the capacitor is very large, the voltage developed across it will be very small, right, okay. And uh, 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 okay, so it is very clear that if you want the output voltage ripple to be small, L and C must be very large. All that this is saying is that, well, you need to have a better filter right yeah. So, if you have a better uh, LC low pass filter then you have uh, lesser amount of ripple at the output there is nothing uh, you know uh, uh, fantastic about this right this is pretty common sense very good. Now, uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, the principle behind uh, uh, the basic operation of a DC DC converter. It turns out that uh, 
in practice, it is not desirable to have a large ripple on the output voltage. right? So, how do you get rid of ripple? Uh, well, uh, there are uh, several ways uh, as you can see from this picture. Uh, one is you make the L and C very large. It has the disadvantage that uh, the, um, the components become bigger in size and the, the amount of space they occupy on a board becomes larger and uh, you know they are more expensive. right? Uh, another way is to say okay, I will have uh, the same uh, uh, the same components and I am going to reduce the switching, I mean reduce the switching period. So, I am going to reduce T s by a large factor. right? Unfortunately, it turns out that uh, well that obviously also reduces the, uh, the uh, that reduces uh, the ripple obviously, but uh, the difficulty with that is that now these switches need to be driven at a much higher rate and it turns out that in practice there is uh, there is always going to be uh, uh, a big parasitic capacitance here right which uh, uh, has to be charged and discharged every clock cycle and therefore that represents a loss of power right further the amount of power needed to drive these switches also is directly proportional to the switching frequency and uh, uh, finally um, uh, uh, what do you call uh, so as a result of all this uh, you know running at a higher switching frequency will reduce ripple at the cost of reduced efficiency right because the switching losses go on increasing so uh, uh, the question is you know is it possible to reduce the ripple without uh, you know, which are without increasing the uh, uh, switching frequency and without uh, you know uh, increasing the size of the components, right? And one way of doing that is to use multiphasing, right? Which is basically uh, the n-path principle. Remember, uh, when we discussed this yesterday, uh, you know, in the la over the last couple of classes, what does the n-path principle do? Uh, it is uh, the the output voltage, as we have seen here. Uh, is the output voltage as we have seen here is uh, some h sub k of 0 uh, times e to the j 2 pi k f s times t and it is the non-zero components uh, of, these, uh, of this expression namely the harmonic transfer functions for k not equal to 0 that are actually responsible for uh, the ripple. Uh, at the output of the DC-DC converter, right? Uh, 